Hello, and thank you all for clicking on this video. If, like me, you're at the stage where you just want to play the classics that you grew up on, but they no longer run well or flat out don't work on modern Windows operating systems, then this is just the video for you. So stick around, grab a drink and or snack, and listen to me ramble about old nerdy things. So I'll begin with a bit of a background when it comes to myself and these classic PC games. I was first introduced to PC gaming by a close school friend. We're talking like the late 1990s and early 2000s here. I myself grew up with a PS1 which was eventually upgraded to a PS2 as a Christmas present from my grandma. My friend, who we'll call Steve for the sake of this video, was very much into his PC gaming. Due to his uncle having a PC business, uh, it was very easy for him to get a fairly decent PC at the time. I still remember to this day going around to his house and seeing Icewind Dale for the very first time. His uncle had got him the game along with a new PC as a gift. I can't remember the occasion, but it would have either been a birthday or a Christmas present. His uncle had made him a party of six characters, all with custom portraits being himself and various members of his family, all well photoshopped into period accurate backgrounds and attire. Needless to say, my young console playing mind was completely blown away by this. I would watch him play Icewind Dale, as well as other games such as Dungeon Keeper, Populous the Beginning, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and the list goes on. I never played these games myself in my younger years. Not that he didn't offer me to have a go, I was just too used to a controller, and young me was quite happy watching him play these games out, occasionally making suggestions on what he could do in the game, and he'd play along with it. It wasn't until a few years later, going into secondary school, that I would get a laptop of my own and be able to experience some of these PC games for myself. I was immediately drawn into the Icewind Dale series. It's the game I had freshest in my mind, and the one that blew me away the most back in the day. It was now around the time that the 3-disc DVD set was available, so thinking 2004 to 2005, I, I still remember to this day picking it up at the game store with my pocket money and installing all three discs onto my Windows Vista laptop. I never owned some of the games that we used to play until much more recently with the discovery of the GOG.com website. On screen right now are my first ever purchases on this GOG account way back in 2014. I discovered the site nostalgically searching for a way to buy Populous The Beginning after wanting to play that for the first time for myself on the PC. And the search led me to GOG. I'll be going through a lot more detail regarding why you should use this website for your game purchases wherever possible over other PC game retailers such as Steam or Epic Games much later. But that more or less covers my introduction into PC gaming and why I hold these old, dated and sometimes very buggy games close to my heart. So now let's dive into the next section of the video. Okay, so the next question is, what is the best way to enjoy these classics today? And I'm glad you asked. For the most part, anything purchased from GOG should run well on modern Windows operating systems. There are a few exceptions to this, but the very few and far between. As the GOG team put a lot of work into patching these games to run well in modern Windows. However, if, like me, you still have some older games kicking around in their CD or DVD format, uh, or you have them on CD, DVD and they're not available to purchase on GOG at all, then you'll need a much more robust solution to play in these games. I've narrowed it down to two main options, so let's dive right in and explain what we have available to us. Option one, being technically the most expensive solution, is to buy yourself a used Windows XP laptop. These will obviously have the best compatibility for old CD and DVD games from the Windows XP era. However, they are quite expensive when you consider the age of these machines and the potato-like specs that you're actually purchasing. The second, and in my opinion best solution, is to use Linux to run these games. A quick disclaimer, I understand a lot of people are dependent on Windows for work or online gaming, so if you're not ready to switch to Linux fully, I'd say at least install it on that old desktop or laptop that we both know you have lying around. You know, the one that you had before your current PC that you never let go of. Or, 
if you don't hoard all of your old tech like me, then just pick up an inexpensive PC secondhand. This Lenovo ThinkPad T430, which I'm using to record a lot of the game footage and desktop footage in this video, uh, was fairly inexpensive and runs great with two very small upgrades being a newer, bigger battery and a quick swap of the old hard drive to a more modern SSD. Another advantage to these old PCs and laptops is most of them have optical drives already built in, a feature that has mostly been phased out these days and prevents you from having to purchase a USB optical reader. Otherwise, obviously you will not be able to run your old disk copies. Now you may be screaming something along the lines of that the ThinkPad is way more expensive than those XP machines. What you have to realise is it's also able to go online, you can do other things with your computer. I'm using this PC to record this voice footage, for example. And yeah, you're going to get more utility out of that machine rather than just running old games. So how do we play games on Linux? To play these classic games that we're discussing here, my method and the method I'd suggest for anybody starting out would be to use an application called Lutris. Lutris works as a front end for Y, among other things. To get Windows specific games working on your Linux PC. Linux native games can also be installed through Lutris, which makes it a fantastic offline and privacy respecting game client as well. I will put links in the video description below, along with links to Lutris's online documentation. However, if you're having any issues getting things up and running in terms of Lutris, do let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you as much as I can. If I see that a lot of people are having these issues, I may go ahead and make a full video on getting Lutris working for the first time. On the Lutris website, you can search for the game that you want to install. A lot of these will have various installation scripts, which may or may not be relevant for your particular game copy. Now these aren't essential, you can absolutely install a majority of games manually However, these can often come with useful patches or resolution fixes built in to be installed alongside the game automatically, making life much easier for yourself. For example, when I installed Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, I used the GOG installation script, which gave the game a 16x9 aspect ratio off the bat and I didn't have to go searching around for resolution mods. The only thing to be aware of is that these scripts seem to be a little bit hit or miss. Some have worked perfectly for me and some have just failed to start the game installation completely. I tend to exercise a method of trial and error when it comes to these. On screen now you're seeing the process of manually installing Escape Torment, the PC DVD edition of the game. And as you can see it's just a simple process of installing the game disc creating a wine prefix and running the installation.exe file. And as you can see, the game will start to install as it should. Now whilst recording this footage, I did have a single occasion where the installation failed. I don't know if that's an issue with my laptop's disk drive or if it's just a wine issue, but I just redid these steps again and everything's worked perfectly. I would also suggest creating a separate prefix for each game. If you don't know what a wine prefix is, it's just a separate folder in your games folder for each game. You will have seen that I made one called Planescape Torment for this Planescape installation. Uh, the reason we do this is because you're going to want different wine versions and wine settings for each video game that you play since every game is going to have slightly different um, recommended settings. Extra wine versions can also be downloaded through Lutris. All you have to do is click on the hamburg menu at the top right corner of Lutris, click preferences, runners, scroll all the way down to wine and click on the little wrench icon next to wine. 
here there will be a list of many many different wine versions uh, if you're having any visual issues with the game it's simply a case of trial and error again with different wine versions and wine prefix settings uh, to get them running just right. For example, for the Infinity Engine games, uh, I think it was Wine version 7-2-2 with uh, Windows version 7 and a setting ticked off in an extra menu. I uh, had them games running flawlessly, uh, but you'll discover this with trial and error. I could make a whole video going into detail about various tweaks and fixes in the prefix settings. However, I would rather save that for its own video in the future, or just down in the comments if any of you guys are having issues with your installation. Planescape Torrent starts up perfectly as it should, has a nice dark gritty intro movie. Uh, I don't know a lot about this game, it is not one I've played, I've heard it's the best novel you can play and I'm looking forward to playing it. The only Infinity Engine games that I've actually put much hours into are the Icewind Dale games. Other runners in Lutris. Uh, Lutris isn't just a front end for wine, it can also connect to various game services such as Steam, GOG, Epic Games and the list goes on. It can also connect with tons of emulators, engine ports and the likes to play all kinds of games. For example, one of these runners is ZDoom. Uh, this actually allows you to run ZDoom Linux natively with all the quality of life improvements that come along with the ZDoom engine. Now, I personally don't have any nostalgia for the Doom. Uh, the game came out the same year I was born. <laughs> so I kind of miss the Doom hype train, if you get me. I love the the new the reboot to the series, and the soundtrack by Mick Gordon is absolutely mind blowing to me. Uh, but yeah, never played the originals until just a few weeks ago, and I must say, with the Z Doom engine, they absolutely hold up. And just to name a few more runners, we have we have emulators such as Dolphin, Mame, Mupin64, even Yuzu, Retroarch, and so much more. So not only can you play PC games with Lutris, you can also play a lot of these fantastic open source emulators to get you know classic console games as well. Now the next question: Can I use Lutris to play modern games? And uh, the answer is. Quite simple, absolutely. The main focus of this video was to bring a solution for running these fantastical PC games that you grew up with and have fond memories of, however, don't run very well on modern hardware. However, that's not the limit to Lutris's utility. Uh, many newer titles run flawlessly in Lutris. Um, personally, my actual gaming PC rig uses Lutris for a majority of my gaming. I like to play Horizon Zero Dawn. I've started playing Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, and the list goes on. Um, just a quick disclaimer, most modern games are designed to run on modern systems. So for these old, for these old games, installation and running them is incredibly simple in comparison to the newer titles. Uh, the newer titles will take a lot more fiddling to get with to get them working properly. You may need extra Windows libraries installing through Wine Tricks in order to work at all. Even when working, you may see a slight performance loss versus running these games natively in Windows. Uh, for me, I don't play online games, so a minor FPS drop isn't a massive issue for me. And I don't play online, so I don't have to deal with anti-cheat software for the most part. Uh, also my PC is fairly powerful, it's not the best money can buy or anything, but generally it's strong enough to just brute force games above a, above a target of 60 FPS anyway. Yeah, Another thing to consider is that anti-cheat software, that software such as BattleEye or Easy Anti-Cheat, can detect wine running in the background as a hack and that can potentially get you kicked from game lobbies. So, if you're playing online, competitive, fast-paced, Windows-specific games, then maybe Linux is definitely not for you uh, in terms of a full-time gaming rig. However, if, like me, you mostly play offline games, 
uh, then definitely give it a go. It's uh, it's worth it just to not have to deal with a lot of the Windows BS on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, so at the start of the video, I alluded to the fact that you should use GOG over Steam or other game clients if possible. I just want to state this video is not sponsored by GOG.com. Uh, not only am I not a big fan of sponsorship, uh, I I just like GOG and what they're doing, so I kind of want to just put this into the video. The first and most straight to the point advantage of GOG is the DRM. GOG.com is 100% DRM free, which means when you buy a game at GOG, you actually buy the game. You don't just get a license to play that game from your account you actually own a copy of that game. Once your game is purchased, an offline installer can be downloaded and saved to your own personal storage. And this is very, very important, and I'm gonna go into that right now. So, let's hypothet hypothetically say Steam's gone under, something bad's happened, uh, Gabe Newell's servers have dropped, and you can no longer log in on Steam. What do you think happens to all those games on your Steam account? They're gone. They, they were never yours in the first place, and they're gone. You couldn't back them up. You can't do anything about it. However, if GOG.com were to go down, as long as you've done the correct backing up, and you've downloaded all your offline installers, and saved them to external storage or physical storage of some kind, and you still have those games, almost physically, as close to physically as you can, without actually having to bring discs back into the system, uh, you, you will never lose those games. Uh, you can install them offline on, on any PC that's capable of running them. So yeah, GOG is absolutely a much more secure and safe way to own your games. But anyway, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you everybody who made it this far into the video. And if you've enjoyed it, a quick like would be very appreciated as it will help the video to reach more people. If you want to be updated when I make new videos, uh, definitely subscribe if you want to. Uh, just a quick note, if you'd like to see me play any of the games that you've seen captured or in the background in this video, be that in gameplay wise or if you've just seen it in my Lutris list, uh, definitely let me know down below. I'm very much on the fence of making like let's play content. Uh, I am unable to do live commentary due to my work-life balance at the moment. However, I can definitely do pre-recorded gameplay with um, like commentary, post-commentary gameplay. That's definitely something I can do. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, let me know down below. And yeah, I'll, s I'll uh, start to consider doing that. But anyway, I have been Blind Beholder and thank you all for watching.